Hi, I'm Dr. Raymond Ng. I'm an otolaryngologist. What I'd like to do with this video is to show you the sequence of event that you need to do to perform the MP screen, which is a system for detections of nasopharyngeal cancer. MP screen is a non-invasive, office-based, transoral brushing system for collections of nasopharyngeal epithelial cells from the nasopharynx. The objective is to brush the back wall of the nasopharynx to collect the epithelial cells to detect the Epstein-Barr virus DNA within the nasopharyngeal epithelial cells. When you collect the samples and the epithelial cells in the brush, the brush will be sent to a lab that analyzes the Epstein-Barr virus DNA within the epithelial cells using a technology called polymerase chain reaction. Studies have shown that there is a strong correlation with high degree of sensitivity and specificity of correlation between the quantity or the presence of Epstein-Barr virus DNA and the diagnosis of nasopharyngeal cancer. So in this video, what I'd like to do is to give you a general overview and explain to you how to prepare your patient, how to set up the system before you do perform the brushing, and how to collect the samples and prepare the sample for shipping. The brushing procedure takes about a few minutes and what we do is we use the brush and go through your mouth, go to the back of your throat and enter into nasopharynx and brush a few strokes collecting the sample. And you can use your hand and I'll show you this is the intensity and you should not feel pain at all. And afterward, we'll take the brush out, we'll take this part of the sample to the lab for analysis. All you have to do is just open your mouth, breathe through your mouth, so that I can do the brushing. It's not unusual that you will feel some gagging sensation, and it's, it's fine, because even with you, with your gagging, I can still perform the brushing. You might feel some stinging sensation or discomfort in your throat or in the back of your nose for 15-20 minutes and it is usually disappear on its own. Sometimes people have a little bit of a blood tinge sputum in the back of the throat for half an hour and they, again they usually resolve without any problems. Now if we use local anesthetic such as silocaine spray it will freeze up the whole area and I would advise you to stop eating or drinking or anything hot or spicy for about an hour and let the sensation return and then you can resume a normal eating again. As I said, the whole process takes a few minutes. All you have to do is just relax and open your mouth and breathe normally and I can do the brushing. Thank you. Ideally, this is the, the optimum position for performing the MP screen. I'd like to have the patient sitting in front of me in the upright position. I'd like to have the patient head well rested and position in the center resting against the headrest. The headrest is important because sometimes when they do the brushing, they might have a little gag reaction and the head moves back and the headrest support the head. I also like to have a line of vision in the same parallel in the oral cavity so that I can do the brushing. With one hand, I have a brush, uh, the tongue depressor, and in the other hand with my brush, I have the patient look, sitting comfortably in front of me, open the mouth, breathe through the mouth, and then gently insert the tongue depressor into the oral cavity. With the light illumination, I insert the brush into the oral cavity. Depending on the level, sometimes I might tell the patient to head down and then open the mouth to give them a better exposure of the oral pharynx. In another position sometimes I find very useful is that I have the patient, I'm standing to the right of my patient looking a little bit lightly toward me and then I will do the same procedure open the mouth and then expose and put the tongue depressor in and then insert the brush to do the brushing. I also find another position sometimes very useful is to recline the chair as if you're performing a dental procedure and that way, sometimes the patient tends to feel a little bit more comfortable 
and they are resting very comfortably at the back of the chair. And then you again do the same thing, open the mouth, put the tongue depressor in, and do the brushing. There's a slight disadvantage of this positioning is that with this reclined position, the soft palate tends to fall back a little bit more toward the back of the oropharynx, and that makes it a little bit more difficult for the brush to insert into the nasopharyngeal area. But in most situations, I find those three positions will give you optimum brushing and collections. There are two compartments. One compartment for the samples with, for the vial. The other compartment is for the insertions of the requisition forms. You'll notice that there is a adhesive sticker portions and this is the part that you will fold back to tape and seal off the whole package for shipping. Included in the package also contained an instruction for collections and transport of the specimen. You will have an individually packaged the trans oral brush. You will have a plastics bag containing the vial with the DNA preservation solutions and two labels specifically with two numbers identified your patients. And then you will have a, a pair of scissors for cutting of the brush. Before you perform your brush, you want to make sure that you have the stand ready, which will be provided to you to support the vial. You will take the vial out of the bag with the identification number. You will inspect the vial to make sure the DNA preservation solution is clear without any, without any precipitation. Then you open up the vial, put the cap, put it on a stand that will be provided, and put it in a silo. Then you should have your brush ready, which is individually open and packaged. And this setup will then be ready for performance of your transoral brushing of the nasopharynx. Take the time to sufficiently relax the patient so that they can open the mouth and properly expose the oral cavity and oral pharynx. Encourage the patient to breathe slowly through the mouth to increase relaxation and keep the structures open. When the tongue is relaxed and settled down into position, you can usually visualize the configuration of the oral pharynx very nicely. To gently place a tongue depressor on the patient's tongue and then move it slowly forward without going to the back of the tongue in order to minimize any gag reflex. The tongue depressor acclimatizes the tongue to feeling a presence in the mouth, thereby lessening any gag reflex for the brush. Gently depress the tongue using the tongue depressor. This will allow good exposure to the back of the throat, including the palatal arch, so that you can identify the insertion points. When a patient's mouth open, identify the insertion point for the brush between the uvula and the palatal arch. Insert the brush in the direction of the palatal arch past the outer soft palate, then the inner soft palate until it is in the nasopharyngeal space, where you can take a moment to wait and encourage the patient to breathe easily and relax. It is important to ensure that the brush is in the nasopharynx. Then with correct placement, the actual brushing can be done blindly, sometimes, just by feel, without actually needing to see the complete motion. In order to facilitate the brushing and open up the communication between the nasopharynx and oropharynx, ask the patient to start breathing through the nose. This immediately relaxes the soft palate and opens up the space in the nasopharynx, which will facilitate the brushing procedure. When you have visualized and confirmed that the brush is in the nasopharyngeal space, place it properly by gently pushing against the back wall 
of the nasopharynx and at the same time remove the tongue depressor to minimize further gagging. Simple rotation of the wrist could accomplish an adequate brushing and sample collections. Remember, gently swap the nasopharynx, but do not press aggressively forward into the tissue, as this could cause further gagging. An attempt to brush on both sides of the nasopharynx would be ideal. However, in most situations, a gentle brushing within the vicinity of the nasopharynx is sufficient. Usually brushing does not cause excessive bleeding. Two to three brush strokes should be sufficient to collect enough cells. When the brushing is completed, removal of the brush is just a reversal of the insertion process. Ideally, a gentle withdrawal of the brush minimizes trauma to the soft palate and the rest of the oral cavity. Any further touching of the brush to the walls of the oral cavity or to the tongue will not interfere with the sample collection. High tongue base. Sometimes you cannot see the back wall of the oropharynx or the posterior aspects of the oral cavity because of the high tongue base. In this situation, ask the patient to breathe in in a relaxed manner and then take the opportunity to gently push the tongue down with a tongue depressor and then gently insert the tongue depressor further to better expose the oropharynx. Instruct the patient to breathe through the nose, which will allow the soft palate to drop. This will also increase the space between the nasopharyngeal wall and the soft palate so that the insertion of the brush can be easier. Narrow palate. When the patient has a very narrow palatal arch and high tongue base, such that visualization of the oropharynx is not optimum. Sometimes the patient becomes so tense that both sides of the nasopharyngeal wall will squeeze into the midline, making the visibility sometimes very difficult. However, brushing the midline or near the midline is usually sufficient for sample collection. Small mouth. Increased relaxation and additional mouth breathing will usually increase exposure of the oral cavity and facilitate visualization of the oral pharynx. If the patient's mouth is small, using the brush to gently elevate the soft palate during insertion will allow access to the upper part of the nasopharynx. Gag reflex. If the patient starts to gag, take the tongue depressor away from the tongue will minimize further gag reaction. When inserting the brush between the back wall of the oropharynx and the soft palate, place the brush more anteriorly closer to the soft palate. This will allow the brushing better and avoid touching the back wall of the oropharynx can also further minimize the gag reflex. If the patient begins to gag continuously, it would be advisable to have the patient rest for a few minutes before you attempt to brush again. Sometimes gagging can actually facilitate the brushing process. The gagging will allow the patient to squeeze the nasopharyngeal wall together even more narrowly and therefore the brush can collect cells within a very confined area of the nasopharynx including both sides of the fossa of the Rosa Muller. When you finish with the brushing you will have enough DNA specimen, epithelial specimens within the brush itself. And the vertical stamp and also the brush has a weak point at this juncture right there. And this is the part that you want to cut. So you carefully put the brush into the vial. And with the vial securely positioned in the silo with a, st with a stand, you gently put your scissor and you cut off your brush. You will have two labels, identification numbers on it. One of them you take off and then put it onto the vial for proper identification of the patient sample. And with that on, you put it into the plastic pocket, the first 
compartment containing the adsorbents. They put the vial into that compartment. The adsorbents purpose is to absorb any excess amount of solution that spill onto the package. You will then use the next label with the identification number and put it on the requisition form to identify and associate the requisition form with the specimen over here. And then you fold the requisition form When you finish with the requisition form, you put the form into the second compartment of the package. And then you take off the peel package and make sure that you have the sticky part completely applied onto the section of this package with a little gentle pressure completely seal off the package and this package is now ready to be sent off to the lab for analysis. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully this video is sufficient enough to provide you with information on how to optimally perform the transoral brushing of the nasopharynx for retrieval of materials for detections of nasopharyngeal cancer. Thank you again.